All right, check this out. This is something pretty cool. I came out here to shoot a botany video and maybe find some grasses, but I found this instead. Whoa, sorry, I slipped and then I scared it off. Give me a second. Well, I'm not going to be able to find that again. What I was trying to show you guys was a really cool insect, a member of the uh, family, I think, Trichoceridae, if I remember right from some of my past winter excursions. They're called, uh, they're called the winter crane flies. They're a cool group of bugs that uh, remain active in the leaf litter during the winter. So you can see them during, like, like we're kind of having an upswing. Like, it's about, like, I think 46 degrees Fahrenheit is what my car said on the way over here. Uh, but anyway, they're kind of, they stay active throughout the entirety of the winter. Really, really cool. Family's Trichoceridae. Look them up if you want. What I came out here to talk about is a, uh, phenomenon that you get in some trees. Now, I'm pretty bad at trees, all things considered, but this is just a really cool phenomenon, and I'm gonna do a really bad job explaining it. What this phenomenon is, is called marquescence, and I'm sure you've heard the, uh, you know, if you got like a really a super basic understanding of botany you'll understand that in this part of the country we typically get uh what are called deciduous trees which means they shed their leaves at uh the end of every se at the end of every growing season usually during the fall and winter of course giving rise to that beautiful autumn foliage deciduous trees but what you'll note if you ever take a stroll in the woods in the winter is that some trees don't exactly drop all of their leaves so what's going on with that well, that gives rise to what we're going to be talking about here today, which is a, uh, a phenomenon known as marquescence. Ooh, marquescence. Doesn't that sound lovely? But anyway, what marquescence is, it's the uh, withering and retention of uh, plant organs that are typically dropped. So uh, what you're going to notice it most obviously in is, of course, the leaves of deciduous trees because they're still hanging on to the tree in the winter here. And... Um, I kind of tried to read up a little bit about the mechanism behind marquescence. It's basically as a result of uh, what's called an abscission layer of cells forming at the base of the uh, at the base of the bud, so that the uh, petiole can then detach. But I guess either that uh, either that uh, either that abscission layer doesn't fully full, fu fully uh, get formed or doesn't fully get fleshed out, and so uh, the tree retains the leaves over the winter. Ooh, camera work is really crap on this one. But uh, it's a pretty cool phenomenon. It's very obvious once you have been made aware of it, as is the case with a lot of things. Once you start seeing it, you see it everywhere. But uh, what I noticed when I was reading about it is that it seemed like it was common in member of the order Fagales, which is, of course, the order of beeches, oaks, and birches, uh, to, just to name a few families within it. Like what we got right here, this guy right here, I don't know if you can see that bark too well. There we go. If the camera would focus on this bark, you would understand why... Whoops. Not doing the best with the camera today, folks. If you could see this bark... Come on, focus. There we go. As you can see, it's got this almost muscly stone-like texture, giving this tree the common name uh, of muscle wood. This is Carpinus carolina uh, in the uh, Betulaceae, a tree exhibiting the marquescence. And there is a fagus, a young fagus grandifolia, uh, down, down the stretch a little ways, so I guess I'll show you that one too, so you can see uh, another example of what marquescence looks like. But it should be noted, of course, that marquescence isn't something that's an exclusive feature of the Fagales order. I believe, uh, I believe from what I was reading, there are some species of, uh, Salix, the willows, which are in the, uh, shit, I forgot the order. Um, but anyway, it's not the Fagales, but they exhibit marquescence stipules, which is very, very interesting, and I've also been kind of noticing I guess we'll walk up on this one now that I'm right next to it. Not exactly right next to it, but you, you get the drift. This right here is another another shrub, tree, subshrub, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, which uh, seems to be exhibiting some marquescence here. This is uh, witch hazel, Hamamelis virginiana. Uh, I might show you some of uh, might show you some more of that later on in the video as well because it was doing some kind of cool stuff because witch hazel blooms kind of late in the season so you can still see the uh remnants of the flowers in winter so i guess what i'm going to do is try to find that witch hazel flower uh show you guys a beech tree and uh get the heck out of here anyways back to it and uh what we got right here the remnants of that uh hemimelius flower the uh the witch hazels uh in the uh in their prime bloom they'll have these very very elongated feathery looking styles they stick out like an inch from this uh central corolla and they're uh they're absolutely beautiful they look like fireworks going off actually might insert a picture of that in here right about now anyway there you go hamamelis virginiana it's got some pretty cool uses it's a very good uh 
I forget the fancy term, but it kills germs pretty well. It's good to clean wounds and things of that nature with. It's a beautiful little sub shrub. Sub shrub tree? As I've mentioned, uh, not the best with trees and shrubs. But I'm learning. Everything's a learning process. Look at those little lenticels on the bark. Ooh, pretty. Anyways, let's go find that figus. This right here is actually my uh, one of my favorite, probably my favorite species of tree. This is Fagus grandifolia, the American beech tree. As you can see, this is a younger one. Uh, these trees get pretty damn large. I'm not sure what the exact size size range is on them, but I guess I'll have to write that up as well in a nice little sidebar here. But anyway, as you can see, clearly exhibiting marquescence. Now, something that I forgot to mention about marquescence that makes it very, very uh, nice and mysterious, actually. Ooh, a little bit of mystery for you this... Uh, this winter afternoon evening whatever anyway there's like there the evolutionary reasons behind marquescence uh like they're not exactly clear like there's a, a wide ranging number of theories everything from like protection of the winter buds okay from desiccation because it kind of you know you can see the marquescent foliage kind of wraps around the winter bud protects it from the wind keeps it from drying out a little bit maybe that's a possible theory another possible theory is that like when this tree drops all its leaves and this comes springtime, it, act, it can act as like nutrients in the soil when they decompose, it can act as like moisture conserving mulch. And another theory I've heard floated around is that it actually works to deter herbivory of the buds, which uh, I don't know, uh, the, mystery, the mystery goes on. I guess some, uh, some botanist is gonna have to figure that one out because uh, I don't know if it's gonna be me because it'd be, make, me, uh, make me do botany out in the winter cold, which you know, might suck a little bit, but it'd probably be fun, because botany's always fun, no matter what. I'm having an absolute blast out here. Anyways, there you go, folks. A nice little primer on marquescence. Marque marquescenescence. Marquescence. It's marquescence. Anyway, really common in oak trees, beech trees. Uh, you see it in the carpenuses, like we talked about earlier. I'm just rehashing all that. Anyways, uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I saw a grass I want to pick, and uh, then I'm gonna bounce. Anyways, hope you guys are having a nice holiday season and all that. Happy New Year.